Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the Autosomo DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of two uh, medieval Turkic or maybe not even Turkic, maybe something else, two medieval individuals from Mongolia. The first individual is a man and this is what he is predicted to look like with my Nasha quote. He is predicted to have brown colorized Greek shaped nose and brown hair. Uh, with Wysek, he's actually predicted to have brown eyes and black hair, and with Snipper Free, he's predicted to have brown eyes, black hair, and white skin. He was heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 1, BH1, did not have BH2 or BH3 or BH4, so likely had darker eye color. In SLC45, A2, he had intermediate non-European skin tone. Um, in SLC2485 and ASIP, he had typical light Eurasian skin tone. And he actually had a rare blonde variant in TPCN2. He does not have the European no-go learner mutation in DRD2's Profenacin Pro variation, which means um, more dopamine D2 receptors, higher odds of schizophrenia. He's got A1A2 genotype in DRD2's TAC1 variation, which means better avoidance of errors, um, lower OCD risk, basically uh, less dopamine D2 receptors. Um, and increased obesity and all that stuff, you can read it on the screen. Um, he's got uh, the Warrior, which is um, val, val genotype in Comtes Valmet variation, which means um, quicker reuptake of dopamine, less dopamine in the system, uh, and um, disadvantage in memory and attention tasks, however, advantages in stress resiliency. He does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. It's a European mutation, so it doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't mean that he's precisely lactose intolerant, it just means he's not a European. And um, he's got TT here, which is lower odds of psychosis, which is actually the derived genotype, so he does have the mutation that sort of protects against psychosis when smoking pot. Uh, not so surprising, because if you know anything about the history of cannabis, it did come from Central Asia, so you would expect Central Asians to be the most accustomed to it. Here is his rare TPCN2 variant, which um, increases the likelihood of blonde hair. It's not a particularly important variant, though. And uh, he's got heterozygous genotype in uh, EDAR, so, which means, you know, semi-East Asian facial traits, I guess. Uh, heterozygous genotype in EDAR is pretty typical for Central Asians today. This is his GED match results with Eurogenes K13. This is actually not a typical genotype for a person from Mongolia. As you can see, he's only scoring 1% East Asian, 11% Siberian. Uh, for Mongols, they would typically score 85% plus of those two categories. He is closest to Turkmen. So this is an individual from Mongolia, but he's not whatsoever similar to Mongols. Uh, he's more similar to Tabasaran plus Afghan Turkmen or Lesgin plus Afghan Turkmen or Turkmen plus some kind of European. Uh, this is what he scores with official G25. Once again, we see it's a very exotic genotype for somebody from Mongolia, right? Also getting more or less a mixture of Tajik plus Turkmen plus North Ossetian. This is what he scores with MZLP K16 Modern. Once again, you can see he, here he is scoring 9% Siberian, 1.5% Southeast Asian, 0.4% uh, Amerindian. He's scoring some... Uh, some Asiatic components, and this is why I think it's a Turkic individual, because this kind of blend of steppe, uh, Indo-Iranian plus Asiatic is kind of typical blend for Turkic people, right? He is closer to Tajiks, but he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Yagnobi plus Tubalar from Altai, or Tajik plus Nagai, or Tajik plus Turkmen, so he's uh, very much shifted towards the Turkic people relative to Tajik, so maybe this is a mixture between uh, some kind of an Iranian individual plus a Turkic individual. But I, I'm thinking it's a Turk. I'm thinking it's a medieval Turk. He is closest to Turkmen here with um, Harappa world and he's getting modeled as a mixture of Turkmen plus Finnish or Turkmen plus basically all kinds of Europeans. This is what he scores with PanDNA LK10. As you can see, he's mostly scoring CHG. Now, uh, the CHG here captures individual Caucasus hunter-gatherer drift, but also uh, BMAC, but also Rania, Neolithic, all this kind of West Asian cluster. Uh, gets lumped into CHG here. This is the same thing with the Pan DNA LK12 here. He's scoring mostly Caucasus Hunter Gather, but in his case, it's mostly from BMAC admixture. Most of his Caucasus Hunter Gather is really not Caucasus Hunter Gather, but instead BMAC. He is closest to Tajiks from Pamir, followed by Nagais here. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Pamiri Tajiks plus Nagai or uh, Pamiri Tajiks plus Turkish Aydin. So as you can see, relative to the 
Indo-Iranians, there is a lot of Turkic shift in this individual. This is what he scores with ancient Eurasia K6. Once again, you can see 11% East Asian, 10.8, uh, basically 11%. Uh, this is quite a lot of East Asian, and because of this East Asian, I am saying that this individual uh, had either was either a Turk um, culturally, he was either culturally a Turk, or he had a lot of Turkic influence. This is his result with Gidrosia K3. As you can see, his one quarter. Uh, East Eurasian and three quarters West Eurasian. Some of this East Eurasian comes from Turkic admixture. And now let's move on to the second sample, also from Mongolia. Uh, this sample has YDNA J2, it's also a man. And uh, this is what he looked like. With Manashakot, he is predicted to have brown color eyes, Greek shaped nose, and bl um, black hair. Uh, he did not have any draft variants in EDAR, so I depicted him very Caucasoid here. Uh, with Ysec, he is predicted to have brown eyes and black hair also, and with Snipper Free, the same thing. Snipper Free actually predicted him to have black skin, uh, but that depiction was only, that prediction was only done uh, on the basis of two variants, which I found in his file, so it's not a really good prediction. Uh, he most likely had blue eye hypotype 1, no BH2, no BH3, uh, and he had some variants that really contribute to darker coloring, so he was probably a little bit darker than the previous individual. Uh, this is me just showing you that he did not have derived EZAR. You can actually check this by downloading the file and searching for all of that yourself. You know, I'm going to leave the link to download the file in the description. Uh, he's got, he has actually got the European no-go learner mutation in pro preference in pro variation of DRD2, which is really interesting. Uh, less dopamine D2 receptors, lower odds of schizophrenia. Quite an interesting genotype to have because this is a stereotypically European genotype. Like, people outside of Europe don't really have this kind of uh, genotype here. Uh, he's got A2A2 genotype in TAC1, which means normal, a uh, normal amount of dopamine D2 receptors. Some people have A1 here. The A1 allele uh, leads to less dopamine D2 receptors, uh, bad avoidance of errors, all that you can read on the screen. And um, in this variation of DRD2, unfortunately, it does not have a really cool sick name that I could use to refer it. Uh, but he's got TT here, which is prone to higher nicotine dependence. And I've uh, saw another study where it says that this is also linked to schizophrenia. Um, he's got normal genotype in this variation of DRD2. Once again, this variation does not really have a, um, a name, but the A allele basically influences working memory and increases the odds of uh, alcoholism. He does not have the A allele, so he's pretty much normal here. He's got uh, the warrior, which is a uh, valval genotype in comps valmet variation, which means quicker dopamine reuptake, uh, less dopamine in the system, uh, better stress resiliency, however, disadvantage in memory and attention tasks. Uh, this is what he's got for lactose persistence mutation. He does not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which is no surprise to anybody because he's not a European. Only Europeans have the European lactose persistence. Even not all Europeans. I don't even have it and I'm a European. Um, he does not have the mutation that protects against myopia, but there's actually a couple more mutations. There's a, lot of, a bunch of different mutations that protect against myopia. This is just one of them, so you can check for the other ones from the file. Uh, and here, he's got CT genotype in OCT1, which means slightly greater risk of temporary paranoia when smoking pot. Uh, it's a pretty pretty typical genotype for any human. Uh, Europeans tend to have TT here, whereas uh, everybody else tends to have CT or CC here. This is his GED match results with Eurogenes K13. You can see he's scoring a little bit of Siberian, 5% Siberian, 1.5% East Asian. Um, he's scoring some... East Asian and Siberian related admixture, but actually about as much as me. And I'm not Turkic whatsoever, I'm a Russian. So this guy uh, from Mongolia had as much East Eurasian related admixture as me, who is a Russian. Very interesting stuff. He's getting more as a mixture of Tajik plus Tabasaran or Tajik plus Chechen. So um, he is labeled as a Turk on Explore Your DNA, and he's also labeled, labeled as a Turk on uh, the uh, data sheet from. Ancient, ancient DNA data ship that has like all the uh, Y DNA, mitochondrial DNA. But I don't know if this is a Turk because it doesn't look like a Turk to me. It looks like a Tajik, looks like an Iranic person. So this is Turk, Iranic person, whatever, uh, from Mongolia. This is what he scores with MDL PK16 Modern, mostly scoring Caucasian here, uh, followed by Near East, Neolithic, Northeast European, kind of a typical blend for a uh, Tajik. He is closest to Yagnobis here. Not a typical blend for a Mongol or anybody from Mongolia, right? He's getting more as a mixture. Actually, uh, Yagnobi plus Bedouin or Yagnobi plus Saudi. So he's even shifted towards like Arabian Peninsula relative to the um, Indo-Iranians. And with Pond DNA LK10, this is what he's scoring. He's scoring 6% Siberian and 2% East Asian. That's like nothing. That's less than me. 
Uh, so he's not not at all Mongol. Uh, he's getting more as a he's he's uh, called Turk. They call him Turk, but I think they just call everybody from that time period from that location Turk. Uh, in reality, we can see here uh, definitely not a Turk, anything but a Turk. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6, and it's kind of difficult because of these results, they're kind of conflicting, right? Here he's scoring 11% East Asian, which is high. 11% East Asian is high for somebody that's Iranic, but at the same time it's very low for somebody that's Turkic, and with the other calculators he's scoring less than that, so I don't know if this person had Turkic admixture or uh, some kind of... East Eurasian admixture of he was just a pure, pure Iranic individual, but this is definitely a majority Iranic individual. Uh, with Gidrozi AK3, he's mostly scoring West Eurasian. Uh, like, typical for Turks would be half East Eurasian, half West Eurasian. This guy is only 15% East Eurasian, so he's definitely very Western in terms of ancestry. Thank you guys for watching until the end. Uh, leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. You can download both of these samples in my heritage, this time in my heritage for it format rather than 23andMe from link which is in the description. You will find all the ancient samples that I make videos on on my Google Drive.